All right, so how to move to LA on a budget. In this video, we're gonna talk about not only how much it costs to live in LA per month and what to expect, but how to actually achieve it and how I moved to LA with basically no money at 16, 17 years old and who wanted to be a creator, influencer, whatever, and literally almost went bankrupt in the process of doing it, but ended up surviving. So I, you know, I have a lot of tips on how to move to LA, how to get the money, how to live on a budget. And in this video, I'm gonna go over it all. So let's just dive right in. To start off, let's talk about the structure of this video. The first half of this video, I'm gonna talk about the costs. So in each category, like rent, utilities, transportation, food, I'm gonna go over like how much it really costs just so you know what to prepare for. And then the second half of the video, I'm gonna talk about how to actually get there, like the steps to save up, my tips for moving and how to find these cheap places. So yeah, let's just dive right into the first part. So the first category we're gonna go over is rent. Now, if you're trying to move to LA alone and you want a one bedroom apartment, you could be looking at anywhere from $2,000 a month, which is rare, mostly it's starting at 3K, to like five, $10,000 a month. So if you're not a sugar baby and you don't have a sugar daddy or you're not a nepotism kid, you know, you're probably not gonna have 10K a month just lying around to spend that. So my recommendation is to get a roommate. So I lived with roommates for a majority of my life. I had roommates of five girls, one girl, two girls, three, like I've, 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 I've experienced it all. The pricing range, if you have a roommate in LA, it depends what you get, of course. But for me, I've, I've found places that are like 1.12K to around 1.67K, like that, that range, you can get a pretty decent apartment and have it shared with like two or three other people. I will say the best way to go about finding these places with roommates is Facebook Marketplace. That's personally how I find all my roommates. I know some people do Craigslist, but I hate the UX of Craigslist, so I just don't go there. But, um, you know, I've had situations where roommates can be kind of scary because uh, people don't get along with me. And I've had that happen to me before and it sucks, but honestly, like it's, you save so much money and you just have to like really like vet the people, like really interview who you're living with. But I, I'm not gonna go into my nightmare roommate situations, but for the most part, it's great to save money. And I found it very, very helpful and economically friendly. The next category that I wanna go over is transportation. You will need a car in LA. I went to LA without a car. I would just use Uber. I was spending around like a thousand dollars a month. So I recommend a car. My car personally, my monthly cost is like $350 plus insurance plus gas is around 500. So my transportation a month is 500 bucks a month, which is better than 1K. So highly recommend getting a car. I know it sucks for people. Like I have a lot of friends who like live in the UK or out of the country, but you need a car unless you want to like live in like West Hollywood where you can like walk everywhere or like maybe Venice, but you need a car or a bike but you need a car. <laughs> the next thing is food. So this is my biggest tip with food, okay? I know a lot of people on these videos are like, don't eat out. Like you save so much money if you don't eat out. But I, I think you need to have an, an eating out budget if you live in LA. Cause I'm assuming if you're a creator, right? And you're trying to move to LA or you're an entrepreneur, right? You're trying to meet people. That's the whole point of LA, right? Like that's why people pay so much money for here. There's like networking, there's so many events, it's by the beach. So like you need to prepare money to eat out just because food is one of the biggest ways to socialize with other creators. Like I personally go to like one or two times a week, a creator meetup and sometimes it'll cost money. So I prepare like a $500 eating out budget. Now I never used to have this. I, I, before when I was 16, 17, I didn't have an eating out budget. That wasn't a thing. But now that I'm older, like I am very conscious of my money and I set aside a good coin just to eat out. And if you don't have this money in the beginning, it's okay. But I really think it's important to work up to. It is not necessary. You can cook at home. But personally, for me, in my head, like the purpose of LA to, is to meet people. So, you know, plan to have a goal of having that money. Um, set aside. Once you put together rent, transportation, going out and you know, other things like the gym, you know, I go to 24 hour fitness, it's like 50 bucks a month, like health insurance and all that. I calculated that you average will spend around $3,000 a month to 3.5K. And that's a very comfortable lifestyle. Obviously you can go lower, you can have like three roommates in one room, like you could obviously go higher, but let me just tell you, <laughs> you do not want three roommates in one room because I'm assuming if you, again, you are like a YouTuber, you need space to film. So I realistically think around that budget, you can get a really sick place and prepare to make that money. You know, I will say personally for me, because I go out to a lot of events, I drive a lot and I just have a lot of stuff that I, I buy. Like I have a meal delivery service. I have appliances that I'm buying, like a furniture, like my personally monthly cost right now is like one 5K a month, which is a lot more than when I first started. Like you don't need that amount in the beginning, but that's what I would say if you wanna actually permanent live here. 
So you might be wondering, hey Jade, how do I get that $3,000 a month in order to live in LA? Now you could save up a lot of money, like save up $40,000 and just like live off that and work a job. You could do that, right? And you can move out of your parents' house. But for me, I'm impatient <laughs> and I wanna move to LA. So here is my strategy. And I, I personally think you do not need the $3,000 a month to move to LA. Like, you don't need that upfront. And this is what you do. I call this the housing ladder. This is my secret strategy I've never told anybody, but it really works. So it's three stages, it's a ladder. There's three different stairs. The first step is to move to LA for a week or two and just get an Airbnb. I know it sounds like kind of like what, like I'm trying to like, you know, this video is about moving to LA, but uh, trust me, it's a lot cheaper to, visit LA for a week or two, do your business, film whatever collapse, go to a conference and whatever, and then go back to your parents' house. I did this of like living in LA for two weeks at maybe a friend's house or getting a really cheap Airbnb for a long time. When I was 16, 17, I did this a lot. A lot of people thought I actually moved to LA, but I didn't. I would basically go on Airbnb or Facebook Marketplace and find people who are renting out their place for a week or two, or at the time, maybe it was like a month or two. And this saved me a lot of money because like if I didn't have money, I could just go home, you know? And you know, it just doesn't really work if you're older, you have kids and family. But for me, you know, if I ever ran out of money, I would just go drive home or I would book a ticket and this happened a lot. And I think not a lot of people know this about me. I couldn't afford to move in LA immediately. I had to like live here incrementally, but that's what you gotta do as a 16 year old. You just gotta grind it and figure it out. I think you should go to LA, but you shouldn't move there if you don't have the money. For me, like I could find an Airbnb for like 50 bucks a night. It's a shared housing, right? And then I could live there for like maybe a week. It would cost me around 350 bucks. And then that ticket would be like 200 bucks. Like it's definitely, you know, a thousand dollar trip, but it's a lot better than spending $3,000 and you can control it. Like you control your expenses. So that's my first tip. And the first stage of the ladder is just don't move to LA if you can't afford it. You don't want to stress yourself out. Just stay here for a week or treat it like a vacation. Then you can move on to stage two. So stage two is what I call getting a midterm lease. So basically there's a lot of housing in Los Angeles and California that basically is like a short-term lease. It's normally people that are in college that maybe leave for three to six months because of break or they're going out of the country. Like you would be surprised how many people go abroad because of maybe school, they're studying abroad and they just have an apartment that they are is laying around. And when I was living in San Luis Obispo, which is not LA, but it's a it's a city in California. Two years ago, I, I lived there and I was staying at a sublease. And basically it's like you have your own room for three months or six months, but there's no commitment. Like you're not signed to like a landlord. Like it's, you're just basically renting from a friend and you're paying them for your monthly rent. And what's great about this is you don't need to buy furniture. It's usually furnished. And like I said, you can find these people on Facebook Marketplace. You can search Los Angeles sublease. And again, you're going to pay like the 1.1K to 1.7K a month. But say you get it for like two months or three months, you know, that's still not a huge commitment than like a one year lease. And there's no furnishing. Like that's the key. There's no furnishing. You know, I would say you, you only want to do this once you have some money. But like, you know, say you save up $10,000. I think you can use that 10 grand to live in LA for three months. And of course, you might be wondering like, Jade, like you don't want to spend all your money in LA. But like, trust me, guys, like, you know, I think LA is one of the most expensive cities, obviously. But there's so many benefits to this. Like, you know, I personally think I've gotten a lot of connections here. Literally, I met so many of the creators that I work with. I've met like managers at big corporations that now hire my agency for uh, work. Like that's how I literally got my Warner Brothers contract for eight, uh, my XA Media company. So it's a risk, but there is a reward and you know, there's ways to do it without actually living there. So uh, I would consider that stage two. And stage three is like, is really for someone who's ready to commit and signs a one year lease. And uh, that's when you pay basically the three to 4K a month indefinitely for a year. But as you can see, this gradual like stepping stone doesn't have to happen all in one. Like I personally, like, let me give you a timeline. 16 to 17, I was doing like the Kaka Mimi scheme, like getting a Airbnb or sleeping on a couch for a week and going back to Portland, my parents' house. And I do that a lot. 18 to 19 is when I did the, you know, I got a three to six month stay and I lived there, no furniture, just buying a, a place off a friend. And then 19, 20, I'm 20 now is, is when I'm, I'm like now committing to like longer term leases. I just signed a new lease to a new apartment actually down the street, which you guys will see very soon. So um, as you can see, this is like, this is a whole like, timeline of four years of me progressing <laughs> up this food chain. And 
You guys should try this housing ladder if you haven't already, especially if you're young, take advantage of it. Like this doesn't work if you have a family, but this does work if you're young. And I'm so happy I didn't sign a fucking one year lease when I was 16. Cause I, wait, one, couldn't afford it. Two, I got to live in a lot of different places. And the best thing too, is if you travel, especially if you go to like digital nomad, you go to Bali for a month or something, I don't know. You don't pay rent all the months you travel. Like I would, you know, maybe get an apartment for two months and then leave the country for one month to travel and come back. And I would not have any overlap with like paying rent. So that's one of the beauties of this housing ladder. And, uh, you know, obviously take your own advice, but that's personally what worked best for me. And I definitely think it's so realistic for any YouTuber. Like I think when people try to move out in one year, it's too ambitious. But over four years, you're definitely able to achieve your goal. And that's why I say use the housing ladder so you can still achieve your goals, but like moderate it. All right, so this last part of the video, which I hope it's helpful. If you guys found this video very helpful, just give this video a like, cause I'm a YouTuber and likes help this video. So the last part of this video I wanna go over is where to live in LA. There's a lot of locations and I've lived in every single part of LA. I lived in downtown, I lived in Culver City. I lived in uh, North Glendale for a little bit. I lived in Hollywood. I lived in the beach. Um, so let me just say, Stay away from downtown. I just don't like downtown. I know some people really do. Like you can live in the USC area, which is where I did and get away with that. But I just don't like downtown. It's, there's nothing that I like to do there. I don't feel safe, especially if you're female. Like I just don't feel safe downtown and it's dirty. And <laughs> I just don't like downtown. So personally for me, if you want to be in that area, live in Glendale, Studio City. That's a really nice area. I just don't like it because I surf and Glendale, which is kind of like, Northern LA is so far from the beach. It's like an hour and a half. So that was out for me, but I did live there for a bit. It was really nice. And, um, you know, I would just stay away from Hollywood. Like just try, okay. Honestly, if you've heard of the place, don't live there. Like if you heard of Hollywood in downtown LA, cause it's popular, it's probably not a good place to live because there's just so many people and there's a lot of homeless, but you know, just try to stay away from those areas unless you get a really good deal. But if you do get a good deal, like just be careful. Like I remember I found this apartment in downtown LA. It was like super cheap. It was like 700 bucks a month. And I was literally gonna move in because it was really cute. It was like a loft. And literally, I uh, I checked the address that I was gonna like tour and it was on Skid Row. If you guys don't know what Skid Row is, like it's like, it's just not a safe neighborhood. It's like the most like highest crime neighborhood in, in LA. So I would just be very careful. Let me tell you some areas that I do like. I really love Marina Del Rey, Culver City and Venice. Obviously I'm biased, it's by the beach. And it is expensive, but you'd be surprised. You could find places in Venice for a pretty good deal. And Culver City has really good deals. Like I have a lot of friends that live there because it's like really close to the beach, but not beach prices. And if you have money, you should live in Marina Del Rey because that's my favorite place. If you guys are wondering where I live right now, I live in Redondo Beach slash Manhattan Beach. Like I live really like on the Northern part. Um, and I really like it. My new place that I'm gonna move into is also in Manhattan Beach slash Redondo Beach. And I really like it. I, I really do. I think the South Bay area is amazing. So anyways, there you go. That's my tidbit. Just live by the beach because I think it just, it's like, why would you move to LA if you can't see the beach? But anyways, that was my top picks. I hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys want to learn more on how to live in LA with a budget, as an influencer. I actually have an extended version of this video on my podcast. My podcast is called I Am Not An Expert and I'll be actually answering some of your guys' questions from Instagram about is LA worth it? You know, exactly how much I pay for certain utilities. All these questions will be answered on my podcast and you guys can listen to it right now. There's a link in the description box. It's called I Am Not An Expert. You guys should check it out and subscribe if you like it. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you to see you in another video and shout out to the comment winner. If you wanna be the next comment winner, just comment below and I love you guys. Okay.